Hi everyone and welcome back to another art journal layout. Today I'm going to use a new stamp set by Darkroom Door. I have those two sets that I got just recently and I wanted to use, uh, to combine them or use just one of them. I decided to go with the bird houses today and uh, just because I missed working on my regular journal book, I decided to work in this one this time instead of using my disc bound journals. So if you are not familiar with the rubber stamps by Darkroom Door, they are combined and you need to use your scissors to cut them out. It's really easy to do. I'm just going to use my Tim Holtz scissors here and separate all the images. I'm also going to peel off the backing and now they are ready to go. They clink nicely on top of acrylic blocks and uh, the fun part about these uh, stamp sets is that they come on their own case so it's nice and easy to store them away. I chose to work on my Dilutions Art Journal book and uh, I'm going to use this craft mat. This is a non-stick craft mat that comes along with my glass mat and uh, I will do the famous technique of Tim Holtz where I'm going to smooth a few colors on top of that craft mat. I'm going to apply some water on top and then I'm going to apply that color on top of my pages. Now just because I'm working on a book I cannot uh, smooth the book as easily on top of those of all that ink so instead I'm just going to lift the craft mat since it is uh, nice, small and convenient to use I'm going to place it on top of my page, move it around and I have a nice start for my background. Before I go ahead and do a second layer I'm going to make sure that this layer is completely dry otherwise I will end up having mud. Now I will repeat the same process and again I'm not introducing any new colors. I will be working with Broken China, Fossilized Amber and my favorite vintage photo. Every time I apply a new layer I make sure that the layer underneath is completely dry. The result is really stunning and uh, organic. I love all that texture that you get with all those splashes. And although it looks completely random, the truth is that you can actually kind of control how much blue, for example, you need in a certain area. And with this technique, I avoid spraying directly water on my book, which helps the pages stay quite flat. Now, I am uh, working again with the same colors, that's fossilized amber and broken china, and I'm adding a few directly with my blending tools on my pages in different areas here and there, depending on uh, what I feel it looks better to the eye. Now, I will finish it off by adding some um, vintage photo all around the edges, since this is my favorite technique to do. I always like to darken up the edges a little bit, since they create a lovely frame and at the same time they help the colors at the center of my book to pop even more. Another favorite technique that I always do on my art journal backgrounds is stenciling. This time I'm using this uh, stencil by Tim Holtz and I'm going over it with my blending tool and again I'm not introducing new colors, I'm using the three colors that I used for the background. This way I'm not making my background look even busier than it already is, but I still add some visual texture. I don't want the background to be super busy, otherwise the focal points on top are going to get lost. Another fun technique for adding visual texture on a background is using um, some stamping. For that I'm using a text stamp that I had for years and I keep on using again and again. For that I'm using the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. And without trying to make the perfect stamping I just added a little bit of text here and there. And finally for my favorite white splashes, this is white gesso diluted with water and I'm going to apply some splashes all over the place. They're not going to be as vibrant as they look at the moment since they are going to react a little bit with the distress oxide ink underneath, but they're still going to give a lovely effect. And here is a close-up look on what I have for the background. I'm absolutely happy with it and I'm so I am impressed on how easy it is to use the stress oxide inks to create that organic looking background. So anyway, I'm going to work on the focal points and for that I'm going to stamp three bird houses from the darkroom door stamp set. For that I'm using my tonic platform. 
I'm stamping everything with black archival link since I know that it's not going to smudge or smear when I do the coloring. Now I always like to add a little bit of double sided tape at the back, this makes stamping super easy, the paper doesn't move on me and I don't have to worry about uh, making uh, a mistake. Once I have all the birdhouses stamped, I'm going to color them in. For that I will be using my Arteza Real Brass Pens. These work as watercolor, which means that they are not going to cover up the black lines that I have already stamped. I stamped everything on mixed media paper, but you can go ahead and do that on watercolor paper if you want to. I'm going to apply color directly on the paper and then blend everything out with uh, a water brush. I'm not trying to do any neat coloring here, my background is quite organic and random and I want these birdhouses to look pretty much the same, to have the same style. Also I don't care if I go outside the lines, I will be using my scissors to cut out everything so that I can stick them on my pages. Now you can see here how I colored uh, some of the birdhouses and I also stamped and cut out the wooden stick where uh, those houses stand on top. And as you see me coloring these birdhouses, I'm going to talk a little bit about the inspiration on this page. I get a lot of questions on how I get inspired. Sometimes I just get inspired by a stamp that I see and I love. And that's the case with this one. The moment I saw those uh, birdhouses from uh, Darkroom Door, I knew I had to put them on my art journal. And um, since they are all adorable, there are actually four of them in the set. I decided to go with three of them just because I like odd numbers as focal points on my pages and I also get a lot of questions on if I have everything pre-planned and I know from the beginning on how it's going, the page is going to look at the end. This is not the case. The only thing I knew when I sat down to create this page was that I wanted to have three birdhouses as focal points. And that's how everything came together. I just play and create a background and play and uh, color the birdhouses. I'm using favorite techniques that I use again and again and everything comes together at the end. And as I'm coloring these uh, birdhouses, I'm making sure that I don't use colors similar to the background. So I'm making sure that everything is nice and bright and they are going to stand out against that busy background. Once everything is ready, I'm going to use my scissors to cut it out. Now I'm going to put them on top of my page and play a little bit with the placement, trying to decide where everything is going to go and what's pleasing to the eye. I'm making sure that not everything is going to be at the same height. I spread them out to both pages. I'm also going to use my blending tool and add a little bit of vintage photo all around those houses. Just a touch is going to make a huge difference since you add the color from the background and it brings everything together. I used matte medium to stick everything down without covering up anything just at the back of those uh, cutouts and I'm showing you here how I work with my brushes. I just uh, wash them out in uh, clean water and leave them to side and when I finish working on my page I will go and wash it at the sink. I will use my scissors to cut out any paper that sticks out of the page. And now I'm going to do the highlighting. For highlighting I used many techniques over the years. This time I'm trying a new one. This is a chalk pen by Faber-Castell. There are many chalk pens in the market. A chalk pen goes beautifully over watercolored images. And although I'm using white here to add the highlightings, I think of all the shadows that you can create with chalk pens just by adding chalk in different areas and spread them out with your finger. Here again I'm going back to that stencil and I'm going to add some details with my chalk white pen here and there. And again you can use the same thing with a white gel pen or any other white acrylic marker that you have that writes beautifully over watercolor. At the end of the video you will be able to see close-up photos on the background where you can see all the detail that I added. Now it's time to add my quote, for that I cut out letters from this die by Sizzix, it is designed by Tim Holtz and it is called Letterboard. I love this alphabet because it is very simple and it's thin, it's skinny, so I can add uh, many letters on top of uh, an art journal page. 
my quote reads uh, find your happy place and I'm going to combine sticking those black letters along with some something. You can of course write down with your handwriting anything you like. I prefer stamping since I'm not happy with my handwriting, especially in English. And um, I'm just stamping everything by using Concord and Ninth sophisticated script stamp set. It's one that I absolutely love. And remember, just like always, you will find everything I use to create this page linked down below in the description area. Now for some final touches, again I'm going with my chalk pen and I'm adding some highlighting on the letters. And with the same pen I went all around the edges to draw a few lines, just to frame it a little bit more. Of course you can stamp and stick little birdies on top of the houses if you like. At this stage I was really happy with how my page was looking, so I'm going to call it done. All I have to do now is to stamp the date. This is not something that I do on all of my pages. After all, for most of them I do have uh, a video footage on my YouTube channel, which means that I know exactly the date that I made every page. Now I'm using my stamp by Altenew. And I'm going to stamp that with a black archival ink and I'm going to call this page done. And here are some close-up photos on today's project. As always you will find down below a full list with all the products that I used for today. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you had fun and that you got inspired and I'll see you all next time.